uh, there are times when uh, patients and uh, even surgeons, you know, surprisingly ask me if we eat so less, and if we eat less, our diabetes is going to get resolved anyways. Is that so? So is that the advice the diabetologists give you that eat less and your diabetes is going to get resolved? A very funny question. Diabetologists, physicians, internists will always tell the diabetic patients to eat frequent meals. You are supposed to eat frequently. You are supposed to eat more. So by eating less, is your diabetes getting resolved in this metabolic surgery? Absolutely no. There is a metabolic process that is happening in the surgery. So we are changing and altering the hormones inside your body. So it's not eating less, but alteration of the hormonal milieu inside your body, which is altering your insulin production, insulin sensitivity, and other factors which will take care of your diabetes, dyslipidemia, your hypertension, and even your liver problems. The other thing that, you know, the other day a patient came to me and said, you know, Dr. Sir, if I, what if I can work out and I can use dietary methods to lose weight? You got about 148 kgs, I can't remember it, right? 148 kgs with an ideal weight of about 60. He's got about 48 and 40 here. He got almost 88 kgs to lose. Possible. The second thing he said, oh, why not a liposuction? Liposuction as a weight loss surgery? Never heard of it. Please understand. Liposuction is a body contouring procedure. It is not weight loss surgery. It is not a procedure done for weight loss. You could get rid of your localized fat, localized area of fat, and get a body contouring done. So I'm otherwise okay, my thighs are, my thighs are heavy, or I've got love handles, my tummy, and I need to go for a short little, let's say wedding, or it's my wedding. And I want to get all those things done, or I'm, or I'm going for a calendar, Girl shoe, yes, you could get your body contouring done by liposuction. I'm not saying it's a bad procedure, but it is not a weight loss procedure that we're talking about. So these are two different procedures that we talk about. The other thing is, if we eat less, and if I do dieting, and if I go on the treadmill, I can lose weight. Why do I need surgery? Why should I come under your knife? Very true. It's a pyramid. I have never suggested everyone to undergo a bariatric or weight loss surgery. There are specific indications, right? And as I said, indication mean indications if you are obese in the category of a BMI of more than 30, right? Because that is the time everyone, including WHO and the governing bodies, define obesity as a disease, which will be linked to your diabetes, hypertension, cardiac problems, and other things. Okay, so I was never very good in numbers. I was an average student of mathematics, and my mathematics teachers are not going to be happy listening to that. However, let's play with some numbers here. Uh, let's assume if you walk at a speed of 8 km per hour, and now that's a very good speed. People who've been on treadmill and people who have actually used a treadmill will know that 8 km per hour is very, very brisk walking. It's almost short of running. So people watching you may be confused whether, whether you're actually running or you're walking. So if an average person walks or does a brisk walk for about 8 km per hour speed, the amount of calorie burn is close to 350 to 450 kilocalories, right? Do you know how much calorie you need to burn to reduce 1 kg? I'll give you the numbers. You need to burn 3,500 kilocalories to reduce 1 pound of weight. 3,500 kilocalories and 2.2 into this would be close to 7,800, 7,900 kilocalories. And in one hour, walking at a speed of 8 kilometers, you burn about 400. So in 10 hours, about 4,000. In about 20 hours, this thing. So you need to work with that speed for 20 odd hours regularly at a constant speed to just reduce 1 kg. And you come back home, take 2 cups of tea, it's equal. So you think you can reduce 80 kg with that? Impossible. So, Exercise really is not meant for people who've gone at over a BMI of 30. The other is drugs. You know, we've got randomized controlled trials where people have taken drugs, and drugs are good for a certain subgroup of patients. Everyone cannot take drugs. They have their own side effects. They are not even US FDA approved, most of them. Right? They are available out of the counter because in India, at times, we are not very strict about what we give over the counter. So drugs is a, I won't say a strict no, 
but for a very limited subgroup of patients. The third is dieting. These so-called fitness centers, and you must have seen n number of ads, you know, Diwali bumper, pay 5,000, lose 5 kgs, get your sister, lose another 5 kgs, get your neighbor, lose another 5 kgs. I'm not really sure how these people work, right? I'm not really sure. Because there is nothing called magic in weight loss. What you lose is body water. That is one thing that you need. Right? What you lose is muscle mass when you go on these so-called fat diets. Fruit only diets. Only carb diets, only protein. You lose your muscle mass. You're not exercising. You're feeling low in energy. So they don't really work. And second thing, the typical ping pong effect. Right? What happens? When you lose your weight after a certain BMI, which I would say about say 30, when you lose about 30 to 15% of your body weight, there is a hormone called ghrelin. This ghrelin increases by 30 to 40%. And it is this hormone which is the hunger hormone of your body. It triggers your brain to make you feel hungry. So what will happen? After a period of fasting, after a period of this dieting, in three and four weeks, you will tend to increase your appetite and you will go up and you will increase. So you start with 80, you will build, lose weight till about 70, and then you go to 90. Now because you've already done it once, you will always want to do it sex, second time, and you can do it. And you will reduce weight, but you will never come to this level. You will come down, and then again a rebound of a 90. So the net mm -hmm. result is always a slow and a gradual increase of your weight. On the contrary, this bariatric surgery, post bariatric surgery, the level of ghrelin reduces by 70%. So, your mental hunger is taken care of. You don't always look for food. You don't always want to eat food. You're not thinking of food. Your life is not just focused on food then. Your smell changes. Your taste changes. And you feel full by just taking a small quantity of meat. So you can take almost anything. Small quantities, frequent intervals, your ghrelin levels are down. You don't feel hungry. You have higher energy. The extra weight that you've been carrying is gone. Your knees feel happy. Your heart can beat better. Your kidneys are better. They can flush out all the bad things. And you feel happy. So bariatric surgery is here to stay. It's been proven. It's clinically proven. It's been recommended by governing bodies of the world. IDF, International Diabetic Federation. A medical governing body which endorses it. American Heart Association. Everyone endorses it. It is here to stay. And it is here to stay for the good. If you are looking forward that you have a BMI more than 30, more than 32, you are suffering with metabolic problems, hypertension, diabetes, kidney, your heart is not feeling well, you have an obstructive sleep apnea, your knees are giving way. I think bariatric surgery is the answer for you. It's the answer for you because it's proven scientifically and endorsed by all over and good people and societies of the world. So cheers, have a happy life.